Hi, welcome to Uncle Tim's farm. I'm Uncle Tim and today I'm going to be rebuilding this old river grill. As you can see all the internal components, the burners, the flame tamers, all that has rusted out long ago and it's just been sitting here in my yard gathering weeds and leaves and moss for a couple of years now. The frame is in pretty good shape, very minor rust throughout and the stainless steel is all in good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and clean it up, replace all the internal components, and see how it works. To clean it up, I'm going to be using my pressure washer. Hopefully that'll take care of it. So, I ran out of gas. Well, the pressure washer got rid of most of the crud. It didn't quite get it all, but it got most of it. It's looking pretty good now, so I will go ahead and start rebuilding the interior. To start with, I'm going to use this piece of channel iron. It's 36 inches long, it is one inch wide and a half inch tall, and that's what the stainless steel burner tubes are going to rest on in the back of the grill. Once I got all the burner tubes lined up and square, I went ahead and marked them, and now I will go ahead and punch them and drill the holes out so that they will be held in place. To drill the holes, I'm using a step drill bit. If you've never used one to drill holes in steel, it's the best way to go. They work so much better than just a standard drill bit. Channel iron isn't quite tall enough for the burner tubes to sit level from front to back, so I found a couple of pieces of scrap metal to place underneath the channel iron to raise it up to level. Now that I'm sure everything's level, I'm going to go ahead and weld these spacers in place. Now I'll weld the spacers to the bottom of the grill just so everything stays in place when I roll the grill around from place to place. Okay, now that everything's held in place it's time to get the flame tamers or the heat plates or whatever you want to call them put in place. All the parts I'm using to rebuild this grill I got from Amazon and there will be a link in the description for the different items. This is a six burner grill but the replacement parts came in sets of eight. But it was cheaper to go with the eight than to buy individually or in smaller packs. Plus this gives me a couple of spares for the future. Once I was sure everything was working I went ahead and pulled it, everything back out and spray the entire interior with cooking spray. This will help prevent rust buildup in the future. I also sprayed all the heat plates and the grill grates. All the smoke you see is the cooking spray burning off. 
And now it's time to cook. I happen to have some brats in my freezer, so I went ahead and pulled those out, and I'm gonna get those cooking. As I was cooking, I noticed that the fourth burner from the left was definitely cooler than the rest. I'm not sure if the orifice where the gas comes out is maybe plugged and needs to be cleaned or what. I'll have to take a closer look at that once it cools down. All in all, it cost me about $75 in parts to get this grill back in working order. When you consider the price of a new grill, that's not too shabby. Well, thanks for joining me on the farm today. And as always, please subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell. You know, all the regular stuff. See you next time.